the Pentagon is expected to send Ukraine at least $275 million in new weapons, U.S. officials said Tuesday, as the Biden administration rushes to do as much as it can to help Kiev fight back against Russia in the remaining two months before President-elect Donald Trump takes office. The latest tranche of weapons comes as worries grow about an escalation in the conflict, with both sides pushing to gain any advantage that they can exploit if Trump demands a quick end to the war as he has vowed to do. You've heard it from here and you've heard it from the White House that we are committed to, to using that full authority that Congress has allotted to us," said Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh. The only way we can do that also is to make sure that our shelves are fully backfilled and stocked. So as our shelves continue to get stocked with equipment and capabilities that are needed, we draw down from those and send those to Ukraine. The president has committed to, you know, ensuring that every dollar that Congress is allocated will be spent. In rapid succession this week, President Joe Biden gave Ukraine the authority to fire longer-range missiles deeper into Russia and then Russian President Vladimir Putin formally lowered the threshold for using nuclear weapons. U.S. officials contend that Russia's change in nuclear doctrine was expected, but Moscow is warning that Ukraine's new use of the Army tactical missile system, known as ATACMS, inside Russia on Tuesday could trigger a strong response. One American official said the U.S. is seeing no indications that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon in Ukraine. The U.S. officials spoke on condition of anonymity because the aid package has not yet been made public. Asked Tuesday if a Ukrainian attack with longer-range U.S. missiles could potentially trigger use of nuclear weapons, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov answered affirmatively. He pointed to the doctrine's provision that holds the door open for it after a conventional strike that raises critical threats for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Russia and its ally Belarus. A U.S. official said Ukraine fired about eight attack missiles into Russia on Tuesday, and just two were intercepted. The official said the U.S. is still assessing the damage but that the missile struck an ammunition supply location in Karachev, in the Bryansk region. The weapons in the new package of aid for Ukraine include an infusion of air defense, including high-mobility artillery rocket systems, as well as 155mm and 105mm artillery rounds, Javelin anti-armor munitions and other equipment and spare parts, U.S. officials say. In terms of the $7.1 billion that we have left um, and that we are able to use for you know, drawdown authority, um, you've heard it from here and you've heard it from the White House that we are committed to, to using that full authority that Congress has allotted to us. Um, the only way we can do that also is to make sure that our shelves are, are fully backfilled and stocked. Um, so as our shelves continue to get stocked with equipment and capabilities that are needed, we draw down from those and send those to Ukraine. Um, the president has committed to, you know, ensuring that every dollar that Congress has allocated will be spent. So if you're still waiting for the stockpiles to be replenished before sending, how do you get there before January 20th? Yep. So we're, we're working on that um, every single day. Uh, this building, you know, uh, is, is working on ensuring that Ukraine has what it needs to to be successful on the battlefield in the short and, and long term. Um, we roll out packages frequently. I don't have one to announce today, but when we do, um, you know, you're going to see that cadence continue throughout the year and through the end of the administration. Talk about the decision to lift the restrictions on the use of longer range attack on missiles for the Ukrainians. I don't have anything to announce or to confirm at this time. Um, if we have more to share publicly, we will do so. Um, that being said, just taking a step back to, you know, answer kind of broad strokes some of your questions. Um, let's not forget where we are, and that is the fact that Russia chose to escalate this war um, by introducing DPRK forces into the battlefield and into the fight. Um, and so what we are doing is, as we have been from the very beginning, is ensuring that Ukraine has what it needs. So you're going to see us continue to support Ukraine with different presidential drawdown packages um, that are going to support its short-term and long-term needs. That would be treated as a joint, joint assault on Russia. 
how concerning is that to the Pentagon and have you changed your posture? So we aren't surprised by Russia's update to its nuclear doctrine. It's something that they've been signaling that they intend to update um, over the last several weeks. It's the same irresponsible rhetoric that we've seen before um, and that we've seen, frankly, for the past two years. So it's something that we're going to continue to monitor, but um, we don't have any indications that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon within Ukraine. And we don't see any, um, you know, we, we don't see any uh, changes that need to be made to our own nuclear posture as well. Why can't the Pentagon comment publicly on this monumental decision? In terms of the comments on, you know, an escalation and a larger war, um, we don't share that. What we what we do believe is that Russia has escalated this war with bringing in, you know, over 11,000 DPRK soldiers into the fight. Um, and a commitment from this administration is to continue to arm Ukraine um, with what it needs on the battlefield. We don't see that as escalatory. We see that as a commitment that we set out from the very beginning of this administration. Ron? A spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin said Tuesday that the doctrine on nuclear deterrence was revised to stay in line with the current situation. The Russian Federation reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in case of aggression with the use of conventional weapons against it and or against the Republic of Belarus as a member state of the Union state, which causes a critical threat to both their sovereignty and or territorial integrity, said Peskov. Aggression against the Russian Federation by any non-nuclear state with the participation or support of a nuclear state is considered as a joint attack, he added. Putin signed a new doctrine Tuesday that lowers the threshold for using nuclear weapons. Putin's endorsement of the new nuclear deterrent policy comes as the conflict in Ukraine marks the 1,000-day milestone since he sent troops into Ukraine on February 24, 2022. It follows President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles. The signing of the doctrine, which says that any massive aerial attack on Russia could trigger a nuclear response, reflects Putin's readiness to tap the country's nuclear arsenal to force the West to back down as Moscow is pressing a slow-moving offensive in Ukraine. Россия всегда рассматривала ядерное оружие как средство сдерживания, применение которого является крайне и вынужденной мерой. И Россия всегда занимала ответственную позицию и принимала необходимые усилия для уменьшения ядерной угрозы и недопущения обострения между отношений. Ядерное сдерживание направлено на обеспечение понимания потенциальным противникам и отвратимости возмездия в случае агрессии против Российской Федерации и или ее союзников. Российская Федерация оставляет за собой право применить ядерное оружие в случае агрессии с применением обычного оружия против нее и или Республики Беларусь, как государства участника союзного государства создающий критическую угрозу их суверенитету и или территориальной целостности. Да, об этом говорит. Значит, агрессия против Российской Федерации со стороны любого неядерного государства с участием или при поддержке ядерного государства рассматривается как их совместное нападение. Это тоже очень важный параметр.